So if you are watching this, then most likely you or somebody that you care about is an athlete aspiring to be at a level greater than the one they are currently at. Uh, if you will watch this video for the next several minutes, then I'm going to outline for you exactly how we assess and create athletes from very young all the way up to the professional level. Uh, before I get into the training methodologies though, it is of vital importance that you know exactly where the athlete fits into what is known as the performance pyramid. Okay, so now here's the thing about the performance pyramid is that each layer should build upon the previous layer to make the most elite athlete possible. Now the bottom layer of the pyramid is what we'll call functional movement, okay? so. F M functional movement. Now functional movement is made up of two things. It's made up of mobility and it's made up of stability. Mobility very simply is the athlete's ability to go through a certain range of motion. Uh, for example, if an athlete lacks proper ankle mobility, when the athlete squats, a lot of times we'll see maybe the heels will come up because the ankle isn't mobile enough or we'll see that to get down they'll have to shoot the butt way back and kind of fall forward to squat instead of just being able to perform a, a proper squat. Uh, and the other thing that makes up functional movement is stability. Now stability is the ability to maintain proper posture through that range of motion. For example, a lot of times we'll see kids that have problems uh, maintaining knee stability when they're lunging or we'll see knee instability in a lot of, say, female soccer players uh, when they change direction, where the knee does not have the proper angle when they're cutting off. So functional movement, uh, the bottom base of the pyramid, mobility and stability. All right, so now I am certified in a system called the functional movement screen, uh, which may not look like much to the naked eye, but it speaks volumes about an athlete's mobility and stability or their functional movement. Uh, what it is is seven foundational patterns that tell us which qualities the athlete has or doesn't have. And then what we do is we take that data, we interpret it, and we use it when we design the athletic training program. If you get nothing else from meeting me at all, come in and I will screen any athlete for free. It is absolutely worth its weight in gold to see the way your body can or cannot move through these functional patterns. Okay, so now the next block in our performance pyramid that we're building on our foundation of functional movement is functional performance. So we'll draw this block here. Again, I'll abbreviate FP, functional performance. What functional performance is very simply is does the athlete have sufficient power to be effective at their particular sport. Now whenever I say power, the football guys always get very excited because they hit people so they think that applies to them and the soccer, player, the soccer player maybe doesn't think it's as applicable. This is not the case. Power is simply just strength plus speed together. So anytime you run, jump, cut, dive, swing, punch, kick, anything of the athletic sort like that, it's power that makes you good at it. Very simply, the faster you apply more force into the ground, the faster you go. That's power. We have several diagnostics that we use here, just a few that we use frequently, uh, and it does depend on the athlete's sport, but we like the 10-yard dash, we like the vertical jump, and we like the 20-yard shuttle. We feel, we feel that those three diagnostic tools give us a pretty good sense of where the athlete is at as far as their power generation. All right. And the last layer on our performance pyramid is what we call functional skill. Okay, so again, functional skill. Does the athlete have the ability to sink a putt or a free throw or hit a baseball? These are your more sport specific activities. So this is our performance period. Functional movement, functional performance, functional skill. What's critical to note is, is that the athlete that by far has the greatest potential while at the same time having the lowest risk for injury is the one who's perform whose pyramid looks like this. They've got this solid foundation that it builds upon, almost having these little 
buffer zones as you go up for the athlete to build upon as they continue to train. I hope that makes sense so far. Okay, so now I'm gonna cover the three types of athletes <clears throat> that we see a lot of in, and hopefully you'll be able to assess yourself and get yourself in this, in whatever category you fit in. Uh, or like I said, we'd be happy to help you with that. But uh, the first type of athlete we see a lot of is the overpowered athlete. Okay, so now this athlete, is got less than average functional movement, better than average functional performance, and we'll say inadequate functional skill. So instead of having this, we have this. <clears throat> Just to draw you an illustration, this could be the female soccer player who uh, is actually rather competitive. She runs fast, she plays hard, she does well at the sport, uh, but upon other investigation, we notice um, that when she runs, she lacks the ability to flex at the hip fully, so what she actually does is she uses her low back to, to compensate and give her that range of motion. Uh, this could just be one example of where that lack in mobility that we talked about um, would reflect in the athlete's performance. The funny thing about it is, first of all, it is an absolute time bomb uh, waiting to go off as far as injury is concerned. But, but what's more interesting is, is that we give that soccer player back proper mobility in the hip and get functional movement to where it needs to be, she will become even faster because now she will be recruiting the proper muscles. She'll be using her glutes more. She'll be able to be more explosive throughout her quads and her hamstrings to help propel her forward even faster. Um, she still strength trains. However, we do need to put a high emphasis on this functional movement, on getting her proper stability and mobility. Okay, the, the second type of athlete that we see a lot of is the exact opposite. They, we'll call this athlete the underpowered athlete. So this athlete moves well, okay, even has a decent skill set. So it's got decent functional skill, but it's kind of lacking in our functional performance category. Uh, I, growing up, would have been a great example of this. Um, I played a lot of baseball growing up, and uh, you know, when I was in Little League, I was very effective. I, I was quick. I hit for high average. Uh, I was considered a better than average player. Uh, however, when it came time to transition to the bigger diamond, suddenly I could hardly hit the ball out of the infield. Not a good combo. Uh, so that's one example of our underpowered uh, athlete that we see a lot of, uh, and I think that actually most high school athletes fit into this category. And this this athlete needs to spend a ton of time in the weight room. Really needs to put a high focus on uh, working on his or her uh, strength and overall power. Okay. And then the last type of athlete uh, that we see a lot of, we call this the underskilled athlete. So our underskilled athlete moves well. Okay, or it's actually got decent power, right? But I won't even have room to write in functional skill on the top. But uh, seems to be lacking in overall functional skill. So this is going to be the athlete where they've got great body composition, good muscle tone on the body, great overall output. Uh, seems to have great patterns uh, on the quarter of the field of play as far as the way that they overall move. The stability is there but yet they always seem to get out competed every time they play. Uh, this particular type of athlete really needs to spend a lot of time uh, working on their ball handling um, or uh, shooting free throws or hitting the batting cage, whatever your sport of choice, throwing passes, whatever your sport of choice is, they need to spend a lot of time uh, working on their skill set, their sport specific skills, uh, perhaps uh, while they also work on their, their movement and performance. I mean, every type of athlete, we're always trying to build on all three of these levels. It's just what are the proportions is, is where we focus. Um, so that being said, um, 
if you're this type of athlete, you want to be talking to your high school coach or your college coach, whoever it is, and you want to be asking them, say, hey coach, you know, what can I be working on to be able to take my games to the next level? Because the weight room is not your only end-all be-all for taking you where you want to go athletically. I hope that makes sense. Okay, cool. So now you see the lens that we view the athlete through. Here are the components of building the efficient and effective athlete. Uh, the first one uh, is pillar or core strengthening. A lot of people use the word core, so I'll use the word core so you know what I'm speaking about. We like to call it pillar here. Um, the importance of the core cannot be understated. Uh, you'll see certain athletes run where the arms and legs should move around the core. The core should not move around the arms and legs. So if the pillar or the core is not stable, then energy is literally leaking out of the body as they're moving. So it will slow you down or it will injure you. So we put a high, fem high focus on our core stability and strengthening training here. Uh, the next phase of our program that we go right into is our movement preparation portion of the program. Uh, we do not like the term warm-up or even dynamic warm-up because what we do is so much more than that. Uh, have you ever been able to be out in the field or be out in the court and you're playing your sport and you just felt that extra surge of being alert, you felt faster, you felt more on point, um, you were just on that day. Well, what we do is we incorporate certain mobility and stability movement patterns while activating the nervous system properly so we can recreate that being on feeling through not only our training sessions, but we teach you how to do this so you're doing it out in the field of play so you're always getting that, that result that you're looking for. All right, plyometric training. Okay, a lot of people use the word plyometrics. Uh, plyometrics is where we make your body more elastic, more able to use the elastic energy that's in it to make you more explosive. For example, here's a simple test you can do right now at home. I want you to squat down and wait three seconds and then jump up as high as you can. And then I want you to literally go down and jump up as fast as you can. The second jump was higher now, wasn't it? Exactly, because your muscles and your tendons can be used like rubber bands to release energy to make you more explosive if trained properly. So what we do here is we use the proper progressions to first and foremost prevent injury, and then second of all, make you more explosive so that you can run faster, and you can jump higher than you ever thought you, were possibly, you possibly could do. Then we move on to movement skills. What's the best way to accelerate, decelerate, change direction? We break it down for you, and then we drill it so it becomes second nature when you're playing your sport. We also make high use of video analysis here. So we will literally film you sprinting, running, cutting, doing all these uh, drills, and then we'll just bring you right over to the laptop, show you in slow motion exactly how you're executing it so that you can be that much more on point. We find it's a, it's a great learning tool for people to be able to see themselves in slow motion. Where is their foot striking? What type of posture are they really holding when they're running? Because sometimes, Look and feel are a lot different than reality. So, so we like to do that for movement skills. Okay, the next I want to talk about strength training and power training, okay? Strength training is of utmost importance for an athlete's performance without question. I mean, how, how fast can you really be if you can't even squat your own body weight, you know? Um, so obviously strength is important. And then power training, is the ability to take the strength that you've gained and be able to use that force quickly. I really feel confident saying as far as power training goes is that we have the most advanced methodologies that there are that we are using here with our athletes, bar none. I'm going to draw a little diagram so that you guys can see the importance of the relationship between strength and power. Right? So let's say that each athlete is a cup of water, a glass of water. All right, and so here is our glass, okay, and we'll say we got, this is an eight ounce glass we've got here. This is a particular athlete we have there. Now, 
The glass is going to rep represent the strength of the athlete, and the water inside the glass is going to represent their power. So, what I can do with this athlete, without really doing too much maximal strength work, is I can make this athlete more powerful. I can use some of the methodologies that we use here, uh, whether it be the Vertimax or Olympic lifting. Uh, you've seen some video clips that just flashed before you. Um, and every time I do that, I'm filling this glass up with more and more water. So the athlete, actually, when they are performing, becomes a lot more faster and more explosive. Okay? What happens after a while is, is we get to the top. We can't pour any more water in the glass. That's where maximal strength comes in. So if we're doing our strength training, now we can take this glass, and now we've got, we'll say, a 12 ounce glass. Now I can continue to fill this glass up by water by doing our fast explosive loaded exercises or our power training to fill it up to, to continue to progress the athlete. So that's strength training and power training. The next component we have is energy systems development, or ESD. Uh, this is what a lot of coaches will commonly refer to as conditioning. Each sport has its own metabolic demands that it puts on the athlete. What we do is we assess your particular sport and then we make your conditioning level set for that particular sport so that you are as fresh in the fourth quarter as you are in the first, or at least as fresh as you possibly can be. And then the last component we have is regeneration. <clears throat> Regenera regeneration uh, is of the utmost importance because contrary to popular de belief, doing all the strength and power training in the world actually does not make you stronger or faster. As a matter of fact, if you come and you train a whole session with me here, at the end of your session, I can guarantee you, you'll probably be slower and weaker. Strength and power training doesn't do it. Regeneration does. So what does your nutrition look like? Nutrition, I'll tell you right now, can make a good athlete great. It can make a great athlete good. It's that simple. Foam rolling, massage, uh, cold plunges, hydrotherapy. These are uh, adequate rest, sleep, naps. These are all things that we outline for our athletes to make sure that they're getting the optimal results from their program, okay? So I hope that you have learned something from this. I hope that's opened your eyes, that you can start implementing some of these philosophies with some of the information that you've already had about training uh, and make yourself a better athlete from here on out. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is, if you're not already on the website, is go to the website, rawfitnessgym.com, and sign up for our sport-specific newsletter. Uh, I'll be constantly coming out with new tips of new training methodologies, things that will fit into these buckets, these plyometrics, strength training, power training, different exercises that you can be applying. So I hope that you subscribe to it. I hope that you learn a lot from it. And thanks so much for watching this. We use the exact system that I was privileged enough to learn when I studied at the world famous athletes performance in Arizona. They trained the first four picks in the 2012 NFL Draft and 14 first-rounders total. They also did the strength and conditioning program for the German National Men's World Cup soccer team, among many others in every single sport. There is no better proven system in the world. So, if you are looking to be thrown into a big group and get marginally better, this is not for you. But if you're looking for life-changing, jaw-dropping results, then we welcome you with open arms. Please visit rawfitnessgym.com for more details.